Okay, we're gonna do color today. And I'm gonna have you start with this basic color project only because it's an easy way to introduce color and every, you may already know a lot of this already, but I still wanna make sure everybody knows what's exact, you know, everything about color theory, okay? So we're all starting in the same spot. Three primaries, of course, are blue, red, and yellow. And the secondaries come directly from that. So blue and yellow make green, and red and yellow make orange, and red and blue make purples, okay? You can lighten and darken your colors naturally with white or black. But for this course, I want you to stay away from using the black too much. There's a reason why. I've got some acrylic paints lined out here. And I'm going to quickly demonstrate. If I can find a bigger enough brush, there we go. What happens to some of your colors when they, you know, here's the yellow. And I'm lighting, these are acrylic paints. I'm going to light with a little white here. And that works normally. And you'll notice that you'll be working with the paints either thickly, like I've done here, or very thinly. Everyone's got their own particular hand when it comes to thickness and thinness and how they like to handle paint. I happen to like to handle paint thinly. So I tend to work in thin glazes and watercolors and things like that. And some people work like Van Gogh with a thick, with a thick impasto surface. Either, either one is acceptable, okay? Um, so let's talk about black and white. We lighten our yellow with black, I mean, excuse me, with, a, with white. And now we're going to lighten our yellow with just black. And look what happens to yellow when it's darkened with black. That's the problem with using only blacks to darken colors. It, gets your, it deadens a lot of colors. It kills it. That's the artistic term for it. You get sort of this ugly color. But there's another way to darken colors that I prefer you to try to use more often, and that is complementary colors. Complementary colors are, there's three pairs. Yellow and purple, which we're going to show you here in a minute. Blue and orange, and red and green, okay? So if I wanted to darken this purple, but not using black, you're going to use its complement. All right, so let's try to darken. Let's let's mix a let's mix a purple here. Looks like a nice purple, purplish color. Now let's try to darken it with this. Now, see the difference with the darkened, with the purple. Yes, that's what. You can either use you can use a little bit of yellow to cut your purple intensity, or you can use a little a little bit of purple to cut your yellow intensity and darken it. Okay, that's complementary color use. Did you notice I put out on here a couple of different reds, and that's because all colors have cool and warm versions of each other. I'm sure you guys, when you got your color paint set at school, if you got one and you try desperately to mix a purple with this warm red here, this is what you ended up with. Either a gray or kind of a weird sad, kind of a, you know, it's kind of a brown. And you're thinking, what, what? I thought red and blue make purple. That's because they gave you a very warm red. This cadmium red here, it's got a lot of yellow in it, as you can see. But this crimson, or a, a alizarin crimson, you'll see it as magenta. They'll have a lot of different names for it these days. Totally different animal. It's a cool red, and therefore it will make your perp, your excuse me, your purple beautifully, as you can see here. There are cool blues too. This is a, the ultramarine blue here that I've got here on my palette with the acrylics. is very different than this thalo blue here. It's going to give you different purple and different greens and things like that, okay? This is cool. It's got a little bit of yellow in it. It's a little bit greenish. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what I mean by it's got a little bit of yellow in it. 
All right, if you're working with acrylics, you'll note some terrible things about it that are gonna drive you nuts. First of all, they dry super fast. And I mean really quickly. So that if you wanna blend a large area like a, a sky scene from dark to light blue, by the time you get all your blue, dark blue in, you start mix your next color, it's all dried up and it won't blend very easily. That's where you add either a slow dry medium or a slow dry retarder. That's what this is. And you'll, it, they come in, this is the liquidy version. There's also sort of a semi viscous, it's like syrup almost, but it's clear. And it won't change the color of your paint, but it will slow down the drying time. Okay, so look for this. Liquitex is a basically good brand here of slow dry medium or slow dry retarder. Okay, if you're gonna work in the acrylics. Now, for your first project, we're going to be doing a real simple thing. It's gonna be on the, the be on your assignment sheet. You'll just download it and copy it onto a piece of heavy paper or your canvas paper or a piece of watercolor paper. And you're gonna draw your three circles and then your two kind of rectangles. For speed's sake, I am going to work in watercolor because they're just faster. Your first circle, it should says a monochromatic color use. Well, that means I need you to take a, a base color, say red, like this warm red here. Let me use this red here. And I'm going to add and start with the whitest, lightest red there. Red back here, there's some white. There we go. And I'm gonna take that red over to the very darkest black. So you're gonna be using black and white to, to mix your with your base color. And just those two. And what you're gonna do is kind of give me kind of a form here. Does that make sense? That stupid phone. A little bit more. And now I'm going to start adding some black to it to darken it on this side. There we go. And then I'm just going to blend that in. So I want it to basically go from dark, there we go, that's a little bit better. So you get sort of a sphere, okay? Let's get rid of this little white stripe here. Put the brightest, whitest part over here. And there you go. Okay. A little bit more there. There we go. Okay. That's your monochromatic one. The second one is an analogous colored one. I'm going to wet my circle a little bit since I'm working mostly with watercolor here. And I'm going to choose blue and yellow as my analogous color group. Analogous colors are you pick two primaries. So I'm going to choose blue. this side here and I'm going to choose yellow on this side over here and what's the analogous color group there you go that's your analogous color group those are interrelated color families that are bounded by two primary colors. So that's an analogous, that's analogous color. It tends to be very harmonious. Think of like a rainbows and things like that. All right, now there, one analogous color group is, pick two primaries, blue, and yellow and all the greens in between that's one another one would be blue and red and all the purples in between that's another one 
And the last one would be, of course, red and yellow and all the oranges possible in between. So you'd make your circle thusly, all right? The third circle <coughs> should be, I want you to work with compliments. So pick, say if you pick a blue, it's going to be orange. You're going to try to darken it with orange, okay? So let's try to do that real quick here. Put my watercolor paper down. I'm going to start with this blue here. Almost a pure blue here. And then I'm going to mix an orange. And darken my blue and cut my blue with that. A little bit more blue, please. Now you can decide how much, how far you want to go with your orange. I mean, if you wanted to go to full orange on this side, that's fine. But I think that makes it more complicated. Let's see. I want, a bit more, I want just a little bit more orange on this side. There we go. And this. I'm just going to introduce it right on top there and blend it in. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay. That is your third one there. Here we go. Now, in the last two boxes, this one sh I want to just be painted flatly. One side, pick a, pick a, pick a color. Pick, pick orange. And then pick its complement on its other side, which is blue. You've got to try to get them so that they'll vibrate at the right intensity. At the right value and intensity, complementary colors can shake. But the thing is tricky about this is that acrylics always dry either di darker or lighter than they are when they're wet. They're just going to drive you nuts. So you're never going to know quite. I would paint one color, let it dry, and then try to get one that is close that when it looks, when you think it paints it, it needs to shake. Okay, it needs to vibrate. And in here I want the last rectangle I want you to put a, a cool color, any cool color, a warm color, and then another cool color. Warm colors, of course, are any reds, oranges, and yellows. Because they make you think of fire or, or the sun or something like that. Any warm colors have blue in it because when you think of blue, you think of ice and water and things like that. So you think of purples, greens, and uh, blues, of course. So any color, blue or purple or green here, another one over here, could be two different ones, that's fine. I would encourage that. And then a really warm color in the middle. And you're going to see this thing really pop out. Cool colors tend to recede in space, and warm colors tend to pop forward. Good luck. Email me with questions if you have any.